This statement is not ours, but the testimony comes from within, and from the Greeks themselves, and supplies its proof by the words which have been already quoted and by those which will hereafter be set forth in due order. This is what our holy scriptures also teach, in which it is contained, that in the beginning the worship of the visible luminaries had been assigned to all the nations, and that to the Hebrew race alone had been entrusted the full initiation into the knowledge of God the Maker and Artificer of the universe, and of true piety towards Him. So then among the oldest of mankind there was no mention of a theogony, either Greek or barbarian, nor any erection of lifeless statues, nor all the silly talk that there is now about the naming of the gods both male and female. In fact the titles and names which men have since invented were not as yet known among mankind, no, nor yet invocations of invisible demons and spirits, nor absurd mythologies about gods and heroes, nor mysteries of secret initiations, nor anything at all of the excessive and frivolous superstition of later generations. These then were men's inventions, and representations of our mortal nature, or rather new devices of base and licentious dispositions, according to our divine oracle which says, the devising of idols was the beginning of fornication. In fact the polytheistic error of all the nations is only seen long ages afterwards, having taken its beginning from the Phoenicians and Egyptians, and passed over from them to the other nations, and even to the Greeks themselves. For this again is affirmed by the history of the earliest ages, which history itself it is now time for us to review, beginning from the Phoenician records. Now the historian of this subject is Sancuniathan, an author of great antiquity, and older, as they say, than the Trojan times, one whom they testify to have been approved for the accuracy and truth of his Phoenician history. Philo of Byblos, not Hebrew, translated his whole work from the Phoenician language into Greek, and published it. The author in our own day of the compilation against us mentions these things in the fourth book of his treatise against the Christians, where he bears the following testimony to Sancuniathan, word for word. Of the affairs of the Jews the truest history, because the most in accordance with their places and names, is that of Sancuniathan of Berytus, who received the records from Hierombolus the priest of the god Io. He dedicated his history to Abibolus king of Berytus, and was approved by him and by the investigators of truth in his time. Now the times of these men fall even before the date of the Trojan War, and approach nearly to the times of Moses, as is shown by the successions of the kings of Phoenicia. And Sancuniathan, who made a complete collection of ancient history from the records in the various cities and from the registers in the temples, and wrote in the Phoenician language with a love of truth, lived in the reign of Semiramis, the queen of the Assyrians, who is recorded to have lived before the Trojan War or in those very times. And the works of Sancuniathan were translated into the Greek language by Philo of Byblos. So wrote the author before mentioned, bearing witness at once to the truthfulness and antiquity of the so-called theologian. But he, as he goes forward, treats as divine not the God who is over all, nor yet the gods in the heaven, but mortal men and women, not even refined in character, such as it would be right to approve for their virtue, or emulate for their love of wisdom but involved in the dishonor of every kind of vileness and wickedness. He testifies also that these are the very same who are still regarded as gods by all both in the cities and in country districts. But let me give you the proof of this out of his writings.